The world's largest crypto exchange has been under fire for the better part of a year now, receiving regulatory right hands from every country north of the equator. At the same time, Coinbase is getting approval left and right, while their buddy Circle is using USDC to essentially take down Tether. But my question is, what is Binance US's role in this whole situation? to another episode of your digit hustle news i'm wade teamer ladies and gentlemen this video is going to focus on the whole binance situation that we have at hand all right i have been wondering for months now why is binance facing all of this heat why are they receiving all of this regulation because i've used binance it's not the worst platform in crypto you know it's the leading exchange for Uh, user accounts and volume. Binance Smart Chain is doing pretty well developing projects, but why are they receiving all of this scrutiny seemingly out of nowhere? Well, after a few months passed and the stories kept coming out, Thailand, UK, Ontario, Singapore, everybody is on Binance's head. At the same time, Coinbase is getting clearance in Japan, Germany, Uh, The UK, Canada, seemingly right behind Binance. So that, that, again, made me ask the question, why? What is the targeting for? Then I stumbled upon this interview. As I say, the, the reason the company was founded in the first place was not, and let me just dispel any, any misunderstandings right at the outset, was not to be an arm of Binance.com. It was just the opposite. The reason was a recognition that the U.S. market and the U.S. regulatory structure is really different from markets elsewhere. And there has to be a freestanding company over here with its own leadership to capture that opportunity. So, so clearly this is based on competition. That particular interview happened around the 1st of May. It was shortly before that when he was announced that he was going to be the CEO taking over uh, of Binance U.S. This is also the same time when Coinbase had went public and Tether's portfolio was busted open and revealed for the first time. At the same time, Binance, their regulation had started to ramp up. So the pieces that are being placed here, ladies and gentlemen, resemble something that I've seen in the retail industry so many times. Imagine Coke and Pepsi, all right? They've been competing with each other since the beginning of time. It happens in business. Now, as we get deeper into this interview, you're gonna see that that's a bit of where we're headed here, all right? Now, it's not about finance being used for money laundering and uh, things like that. This is a battle for data. Where exactly is Binance the, the, the parent company located? When you, when you call them up and, and somebody answers on the other side of the phone, where are they located? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that you call uh, uh, crypto companies on the phone. I mean, when I worked at Coinbase, we didn't have but, phones. Uh, you know, we all have cell phones. Okay, when you, sure when you email, where is it coming from? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, where I mean, is it I mean, coming email from? Goes where, email goes where it goes on a distributed set of servers. I mean, look, it, it's a great sure. question. I'm not trying I, to debate it, but it, 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 I mean, look, as, as you know, but, you know Brian Armstrong. <laughs> it, well, just, just hang on a second. I mean, so Brian Armstrong announced months and months ago that Coinbase would no longer have a headquarters and be remote first. And I think they saw that partly as a response to COVID and partly as a so, hiring advantage, so they could take advantage of talent anywhere. I can tell you where my company is headquartered. Just, just give me a moment. My company's headquartered in the Presidio at One Letterman Drive in San Francisco. So that's where Binance US, the company I will lead, is headquartered. Now, once he got around to answering the question, we see that these locations are remote, which, yes, gives them a hiring advantage, being able to pull talent from all across the world. However, that also gives them immense amounts of data access. All right, because Now, exchanges are sending out personalized emails trying to employ YouTube influencers and other people in the tech space. As of last night, actually, I got an email from Gate.io. They're looking for YouTube influencers specifically. 
So what that means is they're going to have access to large data channels. He also mentioned earlier that Binance US has the capability to license Binance technology. So like I said, guys, you can kind of see the pieces coming together here as to what Binance US's role is. Now, of course, can't forget about Tether, because if you thinking that Tether is not somehow associated with this whole the removal of Binance to make Binance US and Coinbase the world's two largest exchange, because they mentioned Tether too. And I found it very interesting what he had to say about it. So Brian, uh, Tether is an important part of the uh, crypto ecosystem. Was that something you looked at when you were at the OCC? And does it concern you now as CEO of Binance US? Well, um, I, you know, Tether was one of the things we thought about at the OCC when we put out our two guidance letters on stablecoins. And you probably saw at the very end of my uh, time at the OCC, there was an interagency group that put out a broader set of principles on stablecoins. And the point was to say, hey, unlike Tether at a certain point, right, we want to be very clear that going forward, stablecoins are backed by a certain kind of fiat assets, not just dollar denominated assets, right? not long dated corporate debt and junk bonds, but things like short term treasury securities and bank deposits. And I think Tether obviously has evolved over time. But in its early days, one of its challenges was the assets being held in its reserves. That's something I'm very focused on. Obviously, we want to make sure that assets we trade are safe and are as represented. You have to have customer trust it, here. Again, that's one thing Coinbase has showed and we'll work on that. Would it be on would it be in review? Well, I don't want to say it'd be in review. I mean, I'm not there yet, but I would just say there's a set of standards that U.S. regulations, some of which I wrote, uh, prescribe, and things that don't comply with those regulations don't have a place on the platform. So now, he says it right there. Has no place on the platform. Him saying something like that carries some weight because, see, Brian Brooks used to have a very high-level position in government when it comes to the financial markets. They have crazy titles for these positions, so you can look it up for accuracy. But I'm saying he's been in some rooms with some very important people. Those same rooms, Brian Armstrong, Mr. Coinbase, has been in as well. So if the regulatory mindset towards Tether coming from the people in power is that it's not an efficient form of stable coin. It's not backed by anything, thus making it not trustworthy. You put one and one together and two will tell you that Tether's got to go. And if Tether's largest pool where most of the Tether is being moved is coming from Binance.com, well, obviously, a Binance.com has to get out of the way in order for USDC, Circle, Coinbase, and Binance US to accumulate the market share. Now, all of this information, guys, just poses two questions to me. All right. 90% of the circulating supply for BNB coin is already out, meaning there is 10% left. That's another thing to take note of if you're looking to invest in BNB. There's only 10% of them left, so get in while you can. But that's the first question. The next question, who's controlling the price of BNB? Because despite all of this heat that Binance.com has taken, the BNB token, you know, with the exception of the crash that Bitcoin had, bringing the price from 65 to 30s to the 30 range. Binance was in the $600 range, came back down to the 300s. All right. So the only effect you've seen on price is due to Bitcoin's drop. It's not due to all of this regulation news. Any other project would not survive if there was a headline every other week about it being regulated, no other project would survive. Why is Binance still here? Well, so so I, I guess the first thing I just need to be, be super clear about, and I realize nomenclature is everything, but Binance is a company, Binance.com is a company. They have the same founder, sort of like how Twitter and Square have the same founder, and yet nobody thinks Twitter and Square are the same company or that Twitter's headquarters says anything about where Square is located. 
Binance.com is not this company, okay? Binance.com is a different company with a different board of directors, different owners, different uh, products and services than Binance.com has. And so, you know, when people come out and they say things like, well, there's a reputational issue, I don't know how much of that's real and how much of that is something that two fierce competitors might say about each other. I can tell you from the Binance US perspective, under my leadership, we have enormous admiration for Coinbase. We will be a fast follower of them and their trust model for sure. Uh, but if there's any issue but, there between the two, that's a one way, that's a one way issue, not coming from our side. So it's clear. We get it now. Binance.com, Binance.us are two totally different entities, two totally different companies with two totally different board of directors, two totally different agendas, aims, all of that mission statements, whatever. All right. But what does that mean exactly? What effect will that happen, will that have on exchanges, on the price of BNB, that last 10%, all right? That's the, that's the main reason why I came with this video is because it hung on me. It really did. Like, if all of this regulation is coming out towards Binance, yet the BNB token is still holding its price it's still holding its value. You don't even hear about Binance.us in the news with the exception of this interview. Binance.us is not receiving regulatory blocks because they essentially work with the regulators. One of the regulators is the CEO. So of course, they're not going to have any regulation problems. But Binance.com who is ran by the opposition, has no physical location, does not necessarily ask for uh, KYC or AML. They, they don't really do that. You can get on Binance.com, guys, and make a lot of money if you press the right combination of buttons. But see, that is extra money and extra data that the U.S. can't get. And like I said, guys, I really believe that this is about data because another narrative that came uh, over the last couple of years is, especially around election time, was the control of data, was the fact that China was taking uh, data from United States citizens through TikTok. Remember that one? Yeah. Same thing is happening right here, guys. Okay. Now, to close this video out, I'm going to leave you with a clip from the interview, potentially my favorite portion, because he speaks about the future of exchanges. OK, he speaks about the future of exchanges and he's going to give a picture as to what we can expect 2022, 2023, when it comes to the relationship between banks, exchanges and the customer. All right. Now, if you found value in this video, guys, of course, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so we can get this information out to more people because crypto adoption is global. It's happening all over the world on many different levels, government, different sectors, everything. But still, only 10% of the world knows about this. All right. It's time to change that statistic because society is changing. Business is changing. The way we interact with our money is changing and this information needs to be shared. So with that being said, guys, just want to thank you for coming back to the channel. And of course, have a great day. Have a prosperous day. Most importantly, make that money. I'll see you in the next video the future of centralized exchanges do you think that centralized exchanges are at some point going to be a thing of the past that will be overtaken by DeFi and decentralized exchanges I, I i this is just my personal view on that but i do think that over time that will be the case i mean the reason that centralized exchanges exist is to provide an on-ramp from people who mostly have lived in the fiat economy into the crypto economy and there has to be a bridge that allows people to migrate into that to, to that world that eventually will change. And, you know, you were just asking Hester about her view of central bank digital currencies and stable coins. She said a lot of the things I believe. But once stable coins are a fully baked 
fully mature uh, asset class and there's less of a reason to move back and forth between your bank and your crypto wallet, at that point, the role of exchanges will change. And I think they'll be more like technology platforms than on-ramps the way that you see today.